This presentation was recorded at the 12th International Conference on Rapid Response Systems and Medical Emergency Teams. Welcome everyone. This is the, I was just reminded by my colleague Cathy down there that this is the after lunch session. So I have to speak with an animated voice and make sure that you don't all go to sleep <laughs> after your lovely lunch. So um, I'm talking about the PROMPT program which, for those of you who don't know, it stands for the Practical Obstetrics Multi-Professional Training Program. Now, I, I know that we do have one or two people. Hands up those people who've participated in PROMPT. Yay! Well done. Thank you. So, as Andrew said, this is the state of Victoria. If you're from interstate or from uh, inter international um, delegate here, we've got a couple of sites that VMIA cover with insurance that you might want to put on your travel list. Um, so VMIA stands for the Victorian Managed Insurance Authority and we cover all public entities within the state. Um, and in particular, it, it covers all portfolios, so public liability insurance and directors and officers insurance, but in particular medical indemnity. Um, in addition to that, we also are risk advisors to government, and in that capacity, we're very interested in what risks occur in the medical indemnity space. So our work at VMIA, like all good insurers, focuses on more than one thing. So the insurance part is important, but when something goes wrong, we also manage the claim with the view to reducing harm. Our prevention strategies that we support financially and through a lot of programs uh, cover a wide range of different topics and in medical indemnity we, we're involved in all sorts of things around uh, mortality and morbidity across surgical intervention programs, early discharge programs and of course the PROMPT program. Uh, as an organisation, of course, we're interested in making the decisions as sustainable as possible because we're you know, responsible for public money. And we're also looking at supporting organisations identify and respond to the risks that they have as part of their business. Um, again, for the world travellers here, the second slide in is of Numerica Hospital in the north of Victoria. Uh, that was damaged significantly by floods in 2012 and was only reopened last year. So it's nice to see them featured on this slide, which goes to all our corporate events. So as Andrew said, medical indemnity claims are very significant. And this is why we've chosen to invest in the PROMPT program along with other maternity emergency issues. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this other than to say it's a big number. And when you're looking at those things, it's important to think about how we can reduce the impact, not only from an insurance point of view, but the impact of harm to the people that we serve, so mums and babies throughout the state. This is another way of looking at it. Guess which one is the obstetrics? The other thing to think about here is that for all public hospitals, there is a premium that's paid uh, for medical indemnity. And because this is such a big number, it's obviously a big driver for how premiums are calculated. And so what we're trying to do is work in partnership with hospitals to reduce the impact and therefore the cost of uh, not only the cost of claims, but also the cost of the premiums that are paid. The thing about premiums is that we look at claims history over a really long period of time. So any decisions that are made today or the harm that occurs today has a 10-year lag in terms of the premium that's paid. So this is speeded up. You're not having a, like a psychotic episode here. <laughs> so let me tell you about the PROMPT program. It's uh, developed in Southmead Hospital in Bristol in the UK by Professor Tim Draycott. It's the only evidence-based program of its type and embeds continuous improvement as part of the program. The UK data showed, um, as part of the research, a 51% reduction in five-minute APGAR scores less than seven, a 50% reduction in hypoxic ischemic 
encephalopathy, 75% reduction in brachial plexus injuries after a shoulder dystocia, and a 40% reduction in the decision to delivery interval after recognising maternal emergencies. So what we're looking for is, can we replicate this story here? The prompt program um, is usually done in three parts. So there's a lecture component where there's a revision of clinical material. There's often skill stations so that people get a chance to practice delivering babies with a model for shoulder dystocia, but also things like some very basic things. And as an occupational therapist, I had never done this before, but I've managed to have skills test in breaking someone's water. I'm very, very excited about that. <laughs> and of course, scenario role play. So here we have, have a situation here. The points of difference for the prompt program is that it is multidisciplinary. It's a train the trainer model. So when people are uh, invited to do the prompt program, we always ask as a minimum to send an obstetrician, an anaesthetist and two midwives. Often it's more than that. Um, or if you don't have an anaesthetist 24-7, then um, often it's the people who respond as a rapid response or MET team member. So that can include emergency staff, um, intensive care and so on. Other aspects are that it's done on site. So the program is actually run, the scenarios are run in the hospital, in the delivery suites or in other wards. So you're using your own equipment, not necessarily things that have been packaged up. They use live actors and here we have, uh, it's actually a midwife who's, who's playing the role of the patient there. Um, we have had good participation from um, male medical students are absolutely fabulous actors. We have actors who play not only the patient but also family members and you might have heard over the last couple of days the role of family and being involved. It play, plays a critical part in running the scenarios because there's extra people in the way. And uh, we've had ward clerks, we've had learning and development team members participating in the acting roles. And, uh, and then, of course, at the end, there's a debrief and an opportunity to register continuous improvements. So, in Victoria, uh, we, this, this program's now running internationally. It's running in Singapore, in Zimbabwe, in China, in the United States. And VMIA was approached to support the implementation of PROMPT in Australia. Uh, in, more specifically into Victoria back in 2009. So VMIA has been involved in the rollout of the PROMPT program since 2010. Uh, we have now um, 25 hospitals who are signed up and certainly the people in the, the room here are clearly involved in Victoria in running it, but it is running in other states of Australia and in New Zealand as well. We have also know that there are a couple of private hospitals uh, that are participating in the PROMPT program. But um, as far as we know, Victoria is the only uh, state or country uh, to be doing research outside of the UK. So there is some research continuing in Bristol and also in Scotland. Um, but there's no other place, no other jurisdiction that's actually doing research at the moment to look at the evaluation of the PROMPT program. Um, with the hospitals that have been invited to participate, there's a few criteria that we use to select them. So clearly birth numbers was a big criteria at the start. So we've engaged a number of larger hospitals with high birth numbers. Claims, so if people have had issues or problems in the past, but also the readiness of the hospital to be able to you know, implement a, a big program. Um, and now we have just invited, only last week, an additional seven uh, hospitals to participate in the prompt program. Um, it shows that the expectation is there that people want to participate in the program because in three days we already had three memorandums of understanding returned. So that we had already done the, the big sell or the program actually speaks for itself. We know that doctors and anaesthetists in particular who are doing their rotations around the state are finding value in the PROMPT program and almost expecting that it will be offered in, um, in the different hospitals that they attend. And we know that there are midwives that work across different hospitals. In fact, Cathy, how many hospitals do you work in? Three? 
three hospitals. So it's really hard if you're running a program in one place and you go to work in another one and they're not running it. So having a constant uh, and consistent way of teaching uh, the response to maternity emergencies is a really valuable thing. Okay. So, with the research, it's a, a long process. <laughs> you know, we're looking to publish in 2018. But there was a pilot study done in Victoria, uh, which is the group one... here, uh, and this is the blue line. So let me just take you through the graph. So we've got the dates down the bottom. We've got up the side is the number of claims per uh, 10,000 separations. Um, we've got the blue line is the group one experience. So the hospitals that participated in group one, there were eight hospitals there that included the uh, Eastern Health sites, Monash, Ballarat and Barwon. And that looking at their data in their three years prior to implementing PROMPT and then their experience after implementing it. In the yellow line or orange line is the group two and three. So there was another raft of hospitals that came in um, in 2011 and so we've monitored them. So this was their claims experience prior to that. We know that PROMPT is just one tool. There are many other things that influence the claims experience, including significant things like introduction to the fetal surveillance monitoring. And we know that there's going to be um, further changes, more hospitals come in, but the early trends are very positive. Just one weekend, John, I was going to work um, because labor ward was really busy. Um, when I got there, there was a lady who had just gone into sepsis. Um, she was acutely unwell. Her temperature was 39.2. Her pulse was 165. We had a continuous CTG on her, and the fetal heart rate was 215. So the fetal heart rate was off the CTG page. Um, because of prompt, I knew what to do. Um, I was able to get the sepsis pathway, we were able to tick all the boxes, do the investigations. Um, the team that I was working with, the nurse that came from ICU, who had been to prompt training, uh, the after hours coordinator that was supporting us at been to prompt, so was the midwife providing the intrapartum care and another midwife on the postnatal floor, so that was fantastic. As a result, I guess we were able to get a, an optimum clinical outcome, um, both mum and baby were, well, they were unwell, but they were alive, um, and we were all you know, quite happy with how things went clinically uh, as a result. And that's a story we hear over and over and over again about how prompts made a difference. It shouldn't be a memory test. It's all about having the tools and systems in place. We're doing the research not just about the clinical issues, but also about culture, about safety climate. And, um, and we're very excited about what's actually going to come out of that. In addition, we support the PROMPT program by having network meetings with all the site coordinators. On the back of PROMPT, um, at the end of each uh, scenario, we have um, a session where we make up an action list. And on the back of those action lists, um, we have uh, made a few changes, simple changes really, but things like um, having a showing dystocia form on the back of the each birth suite door. Um, we have an APH trolley now, um, in that there's a perimortem Caesar pack. We also now run a monthly um, Neo Puff and Neo Resus uh, for all staff, so that they're uh, practicing that skill every month. And we find that that um, increases their confidence greatly. So the list of learnings is immense and we uh, really want to thank the people who participate because the feedback we get is that they actually really enjoy the training program, that they get results on the day by actually documenting those continuous improvement opportunities. You know, for us at VMIA, the next step is really about how do we make this a sustainable program across the state and allow all the hospitals to participate in it. And for that, we're looking at how we can also take the principles of PROMPT and see whether it's applicable to other clinical settings. So thank you.